I'm Hannah Cousins, and today we're going to be talking about the inverse square law. Now, if you're anything like me, when it comes to physics and maths, there's only a certain degree that my brain can take. Now, you don't have to get overwhelmed by this. All I'm here to do is explain what's going to happen to our image depending on where we place our light nearest our model and the background. What this is mainly to do with is something called fall off. And what we mean by that is the kind of, think of it like a gradient of how quickly we go from light to dark, depending on where our light source is, how quickly we go from the brightest part and it drops off to the darkest part. That's essentially what fall off is. If you want the scientific breakdown, it goes like this. The intensity of light is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the light source. I mean, who cares? There's some fantastic tutorials and information out there that will go down and absolutely break it down for all you math lovers. But for me, I just wanna know what's gonna happen to my images depending on where I place my light. So you might be thinking, fine Hannah, but what difference does this make? It will really change the outcome of your image. And once I understood inverse square law, it massively changed the way that I shot. Now in this example, I'm gonna take a picture where the light is very close to the model and then move it further away. And you'll see the drastic difference that it actually has on the result. So in this very quick and simple demonstration, I'm going to show you what happens to the light on my model with Shana and also what happens to the light on the backdrop. So first we're gonna begin with bringing the light very close to Ishana and let's see what happens. By placing my light close to Ishana, I'm expecting to see some rapid fall off. This means I'll be looking for the background to appear darker in color as the fall off intensity is greater the closer Ishana is to the light source. By moving the light source further away, I'm now expecting to see less fall off as Ishana is now in the zone where the gradient intensity is more even. When we compare these two images, we can clearly see the difference the fall off is creating. With the image on the right, Ishana and the backdrop are more evenly lit when the light source is further away. The image on the left, where the light is very close, creates much more rapid fall off between Ishana and the backdrop. In this next example, we're going to keep the distance between Ashana and the light source the same, but change the distance to the backdrop. For our first shot, we'll move Ashana further away from the backdrop. Here we can see just how dark that backdrop becomes when we increase the distance between our model and the backdrop, but keep the light close to Ashana. Now if we keep the same distance between the light and Ishana, but move much closer to the backdrop, we're expecting to see a different result. Here we can see the backdrop is much brighter and a lighter shade of gray. Now when we compare these two images, the light on Ashana doesn't really change, but our backdrop is a totally different color due to the fall off and the distance between the light source and the backdrop. This can be especially useful if you want to create a darker color backdrop in your studio, if you have the space to move forward and get some distance between your model and the backdrop. Another reason that we might want to understand inverse square law is sometimes when we are thrown into a scenario where we need to light a group of people, but perhaps we only have one light. The next question is, well, where do you put it? In this example, we're gonna look at how you can light everybody evenly just by placing your light in a certain position. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna show you an example of how rapid the fall off happens by just using the modeling light. So firstly, let's kill this light and turn on the modeling light of our flash. Okay, so here we can see what's happening. You get a real intense fall off close to this end to where the light source is coming from. It drops off really quickly here. But as we come a bit further out, the, the rate of the fall off is less and less dramatic. So the intense part is happening over here. And as we come over here, it's still happening, but far less intensely. So we have to remember the closer we are to the light source, of course, what's gonna happen, the rapid fall off happens in the end closest to where the light source is coming from. As we get further away, that drop off and that fall off happens much more gradually. Now let's take a look at what would happen with the inverse square law when it comes to group shots. Now behind me, I've got these four creepy heads, but basically what I wanna show you is if you were to light a group shot, and let's say for instance, you only had one light on you, where'd you put it? 
Now the thing is, with inverse square law, this is where it's going to make a huge difference and have a huge impact on the outcome of our images. So we're going to repeat the process. I'm going to start with the light very close. And then what we're going to do is bring it further back again. Now, one thing that's really important to remember here, I'm going to stay in TTL. The reason being, of course, when a light is very close to a subject, you're not going to need as much power because it doesn't have to travel as far. When we bring it further back, of course, it's going to need more power to travel a further distance. But that isn't the thing we're looking for. It's not about exposure. What it's about is fall off and how evenly or not evenly our creepy heads look. So let's get into the example and show you the difference. For our first example, we begin with the light very close to the head on the right hand side. As we can see, the light on head number one, the one closest to the light source, is very bright. What's interesting here though, is that the difference in brightness between heads three and four is not as dramatic as it is with heads one and two. Next, I'm going to move the light further back so all the heads are roughly the same distance from the light source and take another shot. As we can see here, the faces appear to be more evenly lit. This of course is much more ideal when lighting a group of people. We can still see though that head number four on the far left is struggling to achieve light on both sides of the face. So there's one more thing that I want to do to create an even light distribution on all of the faces. Next, I move my light right into the center and raise the height to push any shadows down and out of frame to create less distraction on the backdrop and a more even and flattering light on the faces. Here we can see that each of our faces are now evenly lit with the same amount of fall off for each head. Whilst this type of shot probably won't win you any awards, it will ensure that your group of people are evenly lit if you only have one light. If we compare the three images, we can see that by moving our light into the center and bringing it further away from our subjects, we can achieve an even exposure on the group of heads. So there you have it guys, without all the scary science, that is a way that you can understand how the inverse square law will affect the outcome of your images.